What's up, everybody? Welcome to week 10 of the NFL season and the FanDuel Hurry Up. I am Brandon Gadula. I'm the managing editor at numberfire.com, and I'm going to be breaking down my three favorite stacks for this week 10 main slate. The first one is going to come from what is very evidently the game of the week with the Cowboys and the Falcons. Total is 54.5 at FanDuel Sportsbook. We have a pretty narrow path to stacking this game as well. And yes, Matt Ryan, I've been kind of pounding the drum for Matt Ryan uh, since uh, week three, but it's Dak Prescott in a bounce back spot being the quarterback I want in this game. Even in a down game last week, Prescott scored nearly 20 FanDuel points. He is third in passing net expected points per drop back over expectation among starters. Uh, the Falcons just 27th in adjusted pass defense, according to number fire. So arrows pointing up for Dak. And I'm, I am going to prioritize CD Lamb here over Amari Cooper, even at that little bit of a salary gap, 77 to 73. Uh, given that Cooper has had the better production in the post buy games, but it's actually Lamb with the better expected FanDuel point output. So kind of banking on some regression here. Either one's fine for this top stack. Love this game. I love this offense, but I'm going to side with Lamb here who has the better downfield target share between the two. My second stack is going to be Justin Herbert and Mike Williams against the Vikings. You'll kind of have to do some talking yourself into with Mike Williams which sounds kind of ludicrous after his first five weeks, but over his past three games, Mike Williams has just a 14% target share, and he's also seen fewer downfield targets and fewer red zone targets in that sample than teammate Keenan Allen. But Allen didn't practice Wednesday. He was limited on Thursday, so perhaps the team will go back to Mike Williams a bit more for this week. It also helps that the Vikings rank just 30th in pressure rate, according to next-gen stats. So the Chargers could have more time to let plays develop downfield. Uh, as for Herbert, kind of an easy case. He's just been one of the best passers in football this season when adjusted for opponents faced. And even against top half adjusted pass defenses, he's averaged 324 yards and 2.3 touchdowns per game. So overall, great game to stack. Uh, it's in the same tier for me as the Falcons and Cowboys. So we want exposure to this game. Uh, and Mike Williams' salary a bit too low for his potential for this week. Uh, my third stack goes into kind of a, a, a holistic view of this slate. We have value at running back. We have value at tight end. Uh, but even with that, we want to make sure that our quarterbacks have big upside because we have a ton of studs on the slate. We also want receivers to have high-end upside. And we have that in this stack with Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett. With Wilson healthy this season... Uh, he is fourth in passing net expected points per drop back over expectation. The Packers are a good overall adjusted pass defense, but they're outside the top 20 in pressure rate, according to next-gen stats, and that should help with Wilson coming back from his injury. Um, and I'm, I'm cool with DK Metcalf, of course, the salary of 8000 a little bit harder to get to uh, than Lockett's at 71. But, you know, Lockett is the, the 1A or the 1B, depending on the week in this offense. He has a 25% target share, 36% air yard share, in game started and finished by Russell Wilson. Uh, a third of the team's red, uh, end zone targets in that sample as well, 25% of the red zone targets. So lots to like with this stack. Uh, we want to use the value we have at running back and tight end to pay up at quarterback and receiver. So uh, that's the name of the game for the stacks for this week. That'll do it for my favorite NFL stacks for week 10. Best of luck this week, and let's double dip on those touchdown passes on Sunday. Mm -hmm.